Hey, it's Steve. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Afuro Laser 2, which is an economical, hobbyist-grade laser cutter that you can use for a lot of your projects. Let's take a look. So the Afuro Laser 2 is a pretty budget-friendly laser cutter, kind of on par with a lot of basic 3D printers that you can buy nowadays, too. Uh, the reason for the lower cost of this is primarily because you don't get a lot of some of the options that you would see in a more expensive laser cutter. So it's an open frame design. There is no enclosure here. So that's a big thing you have to be aware of. You cannot use this inside the house by any means. You're going to have a lot of smoke being generated when you use this with cutting wood. And so I have it in the garage. I can run it with the garage door open, you know, a fan, keep everything flowing really good in terms of the airflow. And that works out great. You can buy an enclosure for this unit that does have fan extraction of the smoke and everything that you can then pipe outside if you want. Uh, but that's an extra expense. It doesn't come with this laser cutter. You have to buy that separate. Also, you don't get a laser cutting base. I picked up, picked up this $100 laser cutting base uh, off Amazon and it works fine. You know, there's plenty of options you can use in this regard. And you can even just use some scrap wood or scrap MDF or something like that. It's kind of a sacrificial layer when you're doing your initial cutting if you want as well. But this will protect your whatever you have it mounted on and uh, work really well long term for you, this metal one that I have here. Uh, I have this screw directly to my bench top here. It's just barely small enough to fit on here, which is good. I have a two foot deep bench here and this is basically just over two feet, but the legs uh, just barely make it to the edge of the table so I can screw it down on the front at least and keep it from moving while I'm cutting. So. I don't accidentally bump it and then totally mess up my project. But overall, it's worked out really well so far, and we're gonna look at a couple example projects here in a little bit. But first, let's talk about some of the specs and different options that are available. So looking at the specifications for the laser cutter, the cutting area is 390 by 390 millimeters, or about 15.3 by 15.3 inches. But they do offer an optional extension kit that can allow you to cut uh, a 600 by 390 millimeter area, about two feet by 15 inches. So you can cut some pretty large material if you do buy that extension kit. The cutting speed though varies dramatically with the material and thickness of the material that you are trying to cut. If you do have the five and a half watt laser, not the upgraded 10 watt laser, you can really only cut about eight to 10 millimeter thickness of material on a single pass at 100 millimeters per minute cutting rate. You can cut thicker material than that, but you're going to have to make more than one pass. So you might have to take two, three, four, five passes to get through a thicker piece of material. And of course, the type of material will impact that as well. You can cut various types of woods. Obviously, some woods will cut faster and easier than others. Uh, you can cut cardboard, acrylic, PVC, leather. Certain plastics won't really work very well because the laser will just tend to melt the edges of those and you're not gonna get clean cuts. But PVC and acrylic do typically cut pretty well with the laser cutter. And of course, the variety of materials that you can engrave is quite a bit larger. And they do offer three different types of lasers you can buy with the cutter. I have the LU24LF, or the long focus laser, and that's a better one for doing cutting. The LU24 short focus laser is better for engraving. And then they have another laser that's actually better for high resolution engraving. They offer a variety of accessories. They do have that extension kit, plus they have two different types of enclosures, an all metal one, plus one that's kind of a composite material. And so you can have your laser cutter inside of that, have protection from the laser light itself, as well as the ability to exhaust the smoke uh, through a fan. And so that can be a helpful addition depending on your environment that you're trying to work with. Uh, they do offer a laser cutting platform. And of course you can get that 10 watt higher powered laser. They also offer two different types of rollers, which are really nice if you wanna do something cylindrical like a baseball bat. And they also offer an air pump if you want to use that. So now let's take a look at the setup of this laser, which is pretty straightforward. Now the manufacturer states that this should take about 10 minutes to set up, but for myself, it did take me about 20 minutes. However, that was going in cold, not having read the directions or anything. That was straight from unboxing to building without any prep in between. So if you do read the directions ahead of time, probably it will take you less time than it did me. Everything comes well packaged. You get all the parts and even the tools that you need to do the assembly. Uh, although you do need a pair of nippers or scissors to cut the uh, included cable ties for doing the cable management. But other than that, everything else is included. You just have to insert two bolts in each of the four corners, and that goes pretty straightforward with the included Allen wrench. And then there's four nuts to attach the actual cross arm that does carry the laser head itself. 
and then you have various cable management to do and you do get included zip ties for that. Some of the bolts do also act as grounding screws, and so you do have to be careful to make sure you get all of the grounding wires attached everywhere they're supposed to be attached. I had originally forgotten to do that, and so I had to go back and remove some of them and reattach the grounding wires. But all the cables that you need are included, and those attach pretty easily. And then, again, overall, 10 to 20 minutes, so very quick assembly to get everything done. Again, you do get all the air hoses and attachments for doing the air assist on the laser for blowing a jet of air there where it's cutting to keep everything nice and clear, which will help improve its performance a little bit. Uh, however, again, you don't get the pump, and so I'm not going to worry about including that or doing, doing anything with it at this time. Now, in terms of operation, I installed Lightburn software on my Mac Pro because that software is available in both Windows PC, actually, and Linux as well, I think. And so that was the option that I used. Setup of the software is pretty straightforward. You have to have your laser cutter plugged into your computer to actually do the setup, of course. Uh, and so in my case, I did need a USB-C to USB-A adapter to do that. But with it plugged in, you just hit Devices, then hit Create Manually, select GRBL, then Serial USB, type in the name, whatever you want for your laser cutter. Type in the 390 by 390 millimeter axis lengths. You have front left for its home position, and then Unselect Auto Home since it does not have an Auto Home feature. Anyway, after turning off Auto Home, just go ahead and click Finish and you're pretty much ready to go. And you have this middle cylinder for getting the optimal spacing with your laser. So you just put this on top of your material underneath your laser and then you can tighten your knob to set the correct focus length. What I did was I ran a simple test here on this piece of wood. I ran it from 10% power to 100% power and then from 100 millimeters per minute up to eight or 9,000 millimeters per minute. The first row here is 100 millimeters per minute, second row was 1,000, and then roughly two, three, you know, but an extra 1,000 each one up. So at like 9,000 millimeters per minute, at 100% power, you get very light engraving, uh, but nothing really happens here if you're going uh, at lower power at a high speed. So basically to cut, you have to go at least 50% power at 100 millimeters. I was running my projects at 150 millimeters per minute at 80% power and that was cutting fine. So that's kind of the range you're gonna be looking at for doing your cutting with this, uh, unless you upgrade to the higher powered laser. But obviously if you're just doing engraving, you can go a lot faster. But anyway, I did cut a couple projects out and so far it's worked really well. One thing that was a little bit sort of surprising to me since this is the first time I've used a laser cutter was that you have to have your computer hooked up to it to run it. It's not like a 3D printer where you make the file, you put it on an SD card, you put it in the 3D printer, or, or just send it there wirelessly, and it prints. You actually have to have the computer hooked up to this full time. So there's not really any type of computer system built into this laser cutter. Now, luckily, laser cutting goes a lot faster than 3D printing, so you're not gonna be having your computer hooked up to it for like 10 hours or anything, but you, know, you do have to have it hooked up while you're using it, so that is one thing to consider. So the first project I did was to take my Steve's Train logo, I imported it into Lightburn, I resized it, I added a circle around there, and then I adjusted the settings so the speed and power for the logo was going to engrave in the wood, and so the settings for the circle would be powerful enough to actually cut it out. And so I effectively ended up with a small wooden coaster, which I put some stain on and sealed, and you can see that here. So overall, kind of a quick little project that really helped me test everything out and figure out what I was doing. So the next thing I tried to do was to cut out some tunnel portals and retaining walls for my end scale of project layout that I'm currently working on. And so I just took some measurements on the layout and used some basic circle and square shapes to make my tunnel portals and my retaining wall sections that I then cut out on the laser cutter and that worked out really good. Now I'll have to actually do a lot of finish work on these to actually make them look like a concrete retaining wall but this was a really great use for this laser cutter and the kind of thing that I plan to use it for a lot in terms of actually cutting out pieces of wood to use on my layout projects. So you can see here the tunnel portals and retaining wall sections that I cut out using the laser cutter. And I'll have to obviously finish these and make them look like concrete tunnel portals and retaining walls uh, down the road here, but you can kind of see how this is going to look. And so the reason why I had to do this is that I do have the second level does hinge upwards. And so in order to basically cover the seam here between the upper and lower level and make it look like you don't actually have a, a hinged section there that opens up, 
these panels will give me a nice solid wall that hides that top level seam there. And this way I can still open and close everything. And it is wood, so it's nice and sturdy. I'm not gonna damage this very easily. And it'll make it look dramatically better when everything's finished off here and everything's in the down position. So, so definitely handy for making things like these tunnel portals and retaining walls. And again, I'll do the same thing here on the top level, cutting out the tunnel portals and wall sections for those. And then I'll have in a later video how I actually finish these and make them look like concrete. So anyway, that's a look at the Offuro Laser 2 laser cutter. If you are looking to pick up one of these for yourself, I will have a link down below in the description along with a discount code you can use to help you save some money on this already pretty budget laser cutter. This is a great hobbyist laser cutter. I plan to use this a lot going forward here for a lot of my model railroad projects. So I might even use this for some structures I might want to build as well. Not just using wood, but you know, cutting out with acrylic or things like that. But certainly this is a nice introductory laser cutter if you are in the market for one. Anyway, that's all for now and thanks for watching. Bye.